Oh, man. You know what? I said before the game that if there was a game that the Grizzlies was going to win, it was going to be this one. And I thought so because really the answer to the Grizzlies has been Zion. They don't have anything for him. And so without him, it's a little bit more even out. But especially without him and B.I., it's really more evened out. More so leaning to their favor. And so this loss doesn't come to a shock to me. Look, the Pelicans are effectively eliminated from the playing game. Even if the Spurs lost the rest of their games and we won out, we're not getting into that playing game. It's over with. You know, they had to win this game um, to keep up with the Spurs. So, at this point, the season is over. You know, we got Dallas, my team, on Wednesday, then Golden State, on Friday, and then the Lakers on Sunday. I don't want to go too much into the schedule of what's remaining. Um, part of me is good, is glad to know, or happy to know that after this, you know, this may be the last time we see Lonzo in a Pels jersey if they should decide that they want to rest him or sit him for the rest of the year. In which case... I will assure you I am not doing any more post-game analysis and I am not watching the rest of the Pels games because I won't care. But let's talk about this game, right? Because that's what y'all are here for. So Lonzo has 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. And 7 guys got into double figures tonight. Jackson Hayes and the kill off the bench and all the starters. But there's one thing that separates Lonzo's double figures from everybody else. Lonzo only took seven shots. He only took seven. And he took, of those shots, he only took two threes. The rest were mid-ranges for the most part. And he had one shot blocked at the rim. That's it. That's it. There's nothing there's there's nothing that pops out about it. He just didn't take a whole bunch of shots. He was extremely effective and like AD said, he let the game breathe. He let it come to him. They pressured Lonzo in the beginning of the game. If I'm not mistaken, I don't even think he took a jump shot in the first quarter. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, he hadn't even taken a shot by the time he got pulled out in the first which was around four, three minutes left in the game. But he only took seven shots. Everybody else took at least double figures in shots. Now, got into a conversation on Twitter with some people, some people I like. And here's the thing, right? People got to realize the first option on offense is not Lonzo Ball. It's never going to be Lonzo on this team unless Lonzo is the only other guy out there from the starters. Like, And, and even with that, it's still not going to be Lonzo if Nikhil exists. They're going to go and give shots to Nikhil and Bledsoe before they ever give shots to Lonzo. I'm just going to keep it 100. His role does not change on this team simply because other guys are missing. The only time that happens is if there's nobody else left. For instance, the Houston game, when he came back and he put up the 27 points and he got the cramps at the end, they had nobody else. Nikhil got hurt that game. It was just him and Bledsoe. They had to go sign IT the next night. That was it. That is all. He, that's why he got to take as many shots as he wanted and he got to play the game the way he wanted to play. And if he wanted to play, Stan just basically had to let him go because that was all you got. That was it. Nobody else was available. 
It was just them. So expectation of Lonzo to play point guard should go out the window. Let's start there, number one. Number two, let me say this before I go into praise of certain guys. The fact that you have guards getting equal or more rebounds than your centers on this team is a problem. And I'm saying this on a night where Russell uh, Westbrook gets the most triple doubles ever in league history. I'm saying this on the night where he is the leader of all time triple doubles. Where he pretty much leads his teams most of the time in every statistical category as a guard. When you have bigs who aren't getting rebounds on the boards, and you got guards that are getting those rebounds. Now, you could say on one hand, it's like, well, the, the centers and the bigs are occupying the other bigs so that they can come in and get those. Fair enough. But at some point, rebounds got to come from the big guys. I'm sorry. They just got to. You know, Jackson Hayes had two freaking rebounds. Two. Two rebounds. Lonzo had eight alone. Najee Marshall had 11. Najee freaking Marshall had 11. Willie Hernan Gomez had eight. I'm just saying. Guards is out there working their asses off for rebounds. Your center's got to be better. <sighs> Bledsoe's going to bled. Bled had a decent game in my eyes. Uh, not too much to talk about with him. He did his normal. James Johnson, on one hand, I like him. I like his old school feel for the game. I like that he's chatty on the court. I like that he talks shit. I love that about him. But on the other hand, he's been detrimental also to the team recently. It seemed like every game he's getting a tech. Every fucking game. And... To be honest, it's not good. It's not good when you're giving the opposed the opposing team a free shot at the basket. Granted, they missed, and I think they missed yesterday too. But when you're giving these guys the opportunity to get free throws on you, that's not good for you. It's not good for your team. I understand there's passion in the moment, but you gotta you gotta reel that in. Luka Doncic just missed the game now because he got too many texts. He always wanna chat it up and tell the rest and 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 you know tell them where they wrong and how to do their job. No, sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up. And that's why he gotta sit his ass out again. Now, from the maps, I'm kinda glad that that happened because it starts over and in the playoffs he can't miss a game due to techs. So for on that hand, I'm happy. I'm real happy about that. But to the point, you can't be doing that, James Johnson. Now, Najee Marshall, yeah, he gives effort. Yeah, he brings energy. Yeah, he plays defense, and he can occasionally knock down a jumper. But my guy has tonal fucking vision. I don't care that he can go out there and he can kind of replicate a little bit of what Josh Hart does. The guy has tonal vision. He does not look all the time, especially in transition. If he gets a rebound, his thought is, let me go from point A to point B. And I hate that with Josh Hart when Josh Hart did it, and I hate it when he does it too. Now, let me mention something here, because I probably should have talked about this, but I haven't. Josh Hart is also in a contract year. They just gave Najee Marshall $5.3 million for the next three years. For the next three years, all together, 5.3. Josh Hart is going to easily want 10 to 12 million per year. So let me ask you something. 
if you're a front office, do you keep Najee or do you keep Josh Hart? Think about it. In terms of what they do, they're almost the exact same. I've outlined on this channel why they're different. If you're new and you have not seen the video, I don't mind in the comment section breaking down why they're different or where their differences is. But do you pay to keep Josh Hart 10, 12, 13 million, 9 million every year for three to four years? Or do you take Najee Marshall, who's basically like 1.6 million every freaking year for three years? See, I, I be paying attention to shit like this. The Pelicans ain't slick. The Pelicans are not fucking slick. I know what they're trying to do. I see this shit coming. But your boy got tunnel vision out there at times. Sometimes he can make the right play and, and, and he can get assist or get dump off passes. And, and I can't even deny that. We need that extra playmaker from time to time. But my God, this dude sometimes is just like, fuck it, you know, YOLO. Like, <laughs> Maybe we should call him Yolo Marshall because he's just straight fuck it. I'm, I'm going. I got the ball. I'm going because I've been in the G League for a minute. I don't even know if I'm going to ever get to play again like this. I'm taking every goddamn shot I can. And now that I think about it from that perspective, I was like, shit. You know, if I was him in that situation, I'd probably do the same fucking thing. Like, Yolo, fuck it. I might have got this contract, but they easily send my ass back to the G League. Let me take every fucking NBA shot I can. <laughs> But, you know, that's that for Najee. Willie Hernan Gomez, look, man. <sighs> There's certain bigs that he's great against. And then there's certain bigs that he's like, ugh. And it comes from your gut, ugh. You're like, Oh my God, this is disgusting. Valanciunas, which I thought was going to be a problem. I thought it was going to be a problem. First time they caught Valanciunas early this year, he was coming off that injury and he still killed us. He's been back for a while, so he's acclimated and he still killed us. And I had a feeling this was going to happen. He was the one guy I was worried about. John Morant don't bother me. In fact, I'm not as high on John Morant as most of you all, if I'm going to be honest. So y'all going to be like, man, this nigga hate guards. He like, I'm sorry. John Morant ain't that nigga to me yet. Yes, he's a good player, but there's still a lot of room for improvement in my eyes. But he's still not that dude yet. <clears throat> LaMelo is more of that dude than John Morant is, if I'm going to be 100% honest. But let's put that to the side. John Morant ain't the problem with his 12.12 .12 assists having ass tonight. <sighs> Valanchunas makes it so that, oh, all I got to do if I'm John Morant is do, 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 go to the elbow. All right, let me pass you the ball. Do, do. Great. And then all he does, he's just going to turn around and just hit it off the glass or just lay it in because there's nothing that Willie Hernan Gomez can do. And it's not like he played a lot of minutes against Jackson Hayes, but there's not a lot that Jackson Hayes can do. He's bigger than Hernan Gomez, so he can just power through him. And he's got more technique than Jackson Hayes can contend with. So... It's just a complete mismatch, and we don't have anybody else for him. Now, we're fortunate that we got him into foul trouble in the third, and he got to sit out the entire time, and I was thinking maybe it's possible he could come back into the game cold, but I was like, nah, not him. And he proved me right. He came back into the game and killed us. 
because they just went to him like and just destroyed us. Now, I don't know what the fuck the problem was with the Pelicans because we just kept going to Willie Hernan Gomez like we were trying to play that one on one. Like, oh, okay, my guy, you can sit there and do this too. All right, cool, no problem. Hey, Willie Hernan Gomez, here's the ball. Oh, it went through his hands again. <sighs> that seems to happen a lot. <laughs> I don't know, man. That man got butterfingers. You know, Baker Mayfield must be his uh his his his, his uh Baker out there. That that might be the person who uh he talks to a lot because he tends to get a lot of turnovers just because he can't catch the ball. So, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, I'm I'm not yeah Willie and. Eh. Let's talk about this bench, though, real quick. Nikhil Alexander-Walker. The man played because he ended the game on 24 minutes exactly. He, paid, he played 23 minutes of fantastic fucking basketball. Fantastic fucking basketball. And there was moments in the game where I thought he was better than Lonzo. I'm just going to be 100% honest. There were points in the game where I was like, I think I would rather have him run point guard. Which it was funny because when they brought him in in the last couple minutes of the game, he was kind of running point guard for the most part. But I'll say this. His playmaking and decision making has been such a tremendous improvement and welcome to this Pelicans team that I hope this does not change when B.I. and Zion get back. They probably won't be back the rest of the season. Honestly, with them not get, having a chance to play again, they're just probably going to sit them the rest of the season. That's the way I see it. But his playmaking was phenomenal. Him and the rest of those guys off the bench are why we got into the game to begin with because the starters just didn't have it. <clears throat> and even when he got to share the court with Lonzo, because Lonzo wouldn't get touches, they were making it a point of emphasis not to let Lonzo touch the ball, both our team and, and the Grizzlies. But when he did get to share the court, he did keep his eyes open looking to get Lonzo the ball to make a touch and to orchestrate the offense. Both of them were orchestrating the offense. Let me give credit to him for developing a sense of point guardism. Because he, I can tell you for a fact, we killed that nigga on this channel. We, we being all of us and the people that watch me regularly or listen to me regularly, we killed Nikhil Alexander Walker for a while on this channel. But I got to give him credit. He has improved so much. As like on the point guard aspect of his combo-ness, because he's a combo guard, he's improved so much in that aspect that he can sit there and run an offense for a little bit. And that's fan-fucking-tastic. That is fantastic. But. <sighs> Cue the bugle. <laughs> he went back to old Nikhil the last minute of the game and it pissed me off. <laughs> it pissed me off. Nigga did not see a shot that he did not want to take or could not take. That motherfucker went up there, pulled a step back three and said, fuck it, I already put down that shot of three. I'm going to do it again. I mean, if you make it, great. But when you don't make it, 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 it you got to see game sense. Game sense, game sense, game sense. Okay, Nikhil is 22 years old, so he's not that far off from being, you know, a finished product. Same thing with Zell, because Zell's 23. You got to have more situational awareness. We're down, what, five, four? If I miss this three, we affect the game is over. You got to think about that. And I know he's still, he's still getting experience in the league. That'll come. Credit for him for having the confidence to take the shots that he took. But damn it, man, can we take... I wish we could have took that step back three and got a better shot. It, 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 it just... With the, this is, to steal Max Kellerman's statement, the fate of the universe is on the line. The fate of the season is on the line. 
do I need to take this three or can I get a better opportunity? I wish he would have chose the latter because even if the Pelicans don't get a three and they get a two in that situation, it's a one point game. Memphis cannot afford to just take a shitty shot. So they got to try to get into something. They can't, they're going to try to get the best shot possible. And it puts pressure on them to execute. You've already played fine defensively the entire game for the most part, especially in the second half. Palms get sweaty. I would have much rather, hey, if they go down there and drill a shot on you, hey, man, shake shake his hand. Good game, bro. Good fucking game. But we didn't get that opportunity. And I'm not saying that the kill cost us the game. Because he did but you got to be better in those situations. But kudos to him for coming to play, man. Dude's been showing up the last couple games. Only can play like 20 to 24 minutes. We needed all of his points in both of those games. We needed everything from his, all his productivity, his defense, we needed it. So kudos to him. I'm going to save that for the end of the video. I'm not going to go there just yet. Jackson Hayes. Yo. When did Jackson Hayes start becoming a three-point shooter? Like, he knocked down three of them tonight. Three of them. I think he's hit more threes this season than Willie Hernan Gomez, and Willie Hernan Gomez is taking more. Like, for real? <laughs> but nah, Jackson Hayes has been unbelievable recently. Like, not just the last couple games, but like the last month or so. He's been... Really, last two months, he's been freaking good. And I'm glad to see that development. I think a little bit of that has to do with Adams coaching him on the side. But I also think it's just him starting to not be as raw as he was and starting to develop, you know, NBA sense and understanding of the game and understanding of the position. No more of these shitty-ass fouls that he used to give us in the first year. Now he's understanding where he needs to be and how he needs to position himself to attack the basket or to help out on a play or to seal a guy. I like what I'm seeing from him. I really like what I'm seeing from him. And I shitted on Jackson for a little bit on this channel too because he was playing like garbage. But kudos and credit to the brother for going out there and doing what he's supposed to do. And it makes you think like, damn, we paying Steven Adams $29 million this year. Why we just couldn't let this nigga play all year? And you're like, well, you just said, hey, got the tutor just Steven Adams. I get it. But damn, man. That's a lot of money to go to a person when you'd rather have the guy off the bench who's not even making close to that amount and you got more flexibility to make a certain decision in the offseason about, hey, if I want to go sign this shooter, you know, I can go do that. That's 20 plus million I got, you know, actually be like 17 and a half. So it's like, hey, you know, I can afford to pay you 17. Now you can't do that. But he's been great. And I need to see him get more minutes with. Lonzo, in particular, uh, I thought him and Lonzo have, have this natural chemistry, but Lonzo seems to have natural chemistry with every young athletic big. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the way he likes to play the game. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So, William Gabriel, knocking down threes. I did a whole video telling you guys prior to the season what he is from what I saw. I told you. I told you. Yes, I have to bring it back. I told you. It's out there. Go look on my channel. I mentioned it. I brought this up. I told you what he is. He can play defense and he can knock down threes. Now, we gave Melly minutes this year. We gave JJ Redick minutes this year. I'm just saying, we needed a backup forward. 
who can knock down threes and play. You know what? Okay, enough of that. So, outside of that, I don't feel the need to talk about anybody else. Wesley Wondu, I kind of don't give a shit about. Uh, nobody else. Kara, eh, I'll, yeah, he ain't do shit either. So, let's do this real quick. I've been right. Yes, I have to toot my my own horn here real quick. I've been right all season. Yes, there's some things I got that were wrong. I might even do a compilation of those uh, once the season over. It's like, hey, stuff that Jay Strokes got wrong. Big things I got wrong. But I've been right so much this freaking season. Let's Let's start from the top here. Number one. I said Lonzo was going to take 15 to 20 games to start to pop. And it happened. I was right. I said Nikhil Alexander Walker should be starting next to Lonzo. And I've been right. He should. Even more so for Bled, he should be starting next to Lonzo. Number three. I said Jackson Hayes needs to start taking more jump shots. They need to develop him to take more jump shots. What has he been doing? This year, he's shown he can knock down jumpers. He's shooting 78% from the free throw line. That's an indicator of how good of a free throw shooter you are. Why is he taking threes? Why? Why are we not developing and pushing these plays? Look, what do I always tell you guys? I always say you never completely take something away from a player. You give them a steady diet. You can limit but you don't ever take away. He should have been shooting jumpers all season. In this game, they needed every one of his fucking threes. Imagine what it would have looked like if it's like, hey, Jackson Hayes is a 34, 35% three-point shooter on the year. You gotta, you kind of gotta, if he's gonna square up, you gotta be out there to guard him. Can you imagine the space that you just put on the Pelicans if they're in the scatter reports having to guard him from three because that's the shot he takes? Fuck it, we don't even need to be three. Mid-range, let him take mid-range jump shots. Let him get comfortable with it. Imagine the extra space. He's already in a dunker spot. Imagine if you could play pick and pop with Jackson Hayes. Everybody's like, we don't have enough shooting. Well, guess what? Now you got another shooter. Line up, Lonzo, Nikhil, B.I., Zion, Hayes. Hayes could be a pick and pop threat. He can be athletic and attack the basket. He can be a rim protector. He can switch on the guards. Hello. Now Zion got plenty of space to work with. So do B.I. I was right on this shit. I called this shit. I said Nikhil is going to be offensive Drew. He's going to be a little bit better than him offensively, but defensively, I don't think he was ever going to be what Drew was defensively. What is he doing? He's playing very good on the defensive end, albeit nowhere near Drew. But offensively, I'm not saying he is as good as Drew, but he's definitely looking like a better shooter than Drew. He's looking like a better shooter than Drew. And he's only 22. Drew is in his 30s. He's not in his prime yet. He's still growing. He's still going to improve. I was right on that. <sighs> Zion needs to take more mid-range jump shots. He's not taking them. Granted, he hasn't been playing recently because he's injured. But goddamn, when he started taking a mid-range, it's like, yo, that looks like a go-to shot, especially on the baseline. I've been right turn after turn after turn after turn after turn. This shit ain't that hard. It's really not. It's simply just basketball. 
at the end of the day. It's just basketball at the end of the day. And the Pelican season is basically over with, with three games left to go. If we were going to miss the playoffs, shouldn't we have spent more time developing the younger guys? So what was the point of this season? Yes, some guys improved. But if you're going to miss the playoffs anyway, and I get it, David Griffin is, he sucks at drafting. But God damn it, at the very least, let the guys develop. You didn't need all these fucking vets then if we're going to miss the playoffs. And we're not even going to get a high draft pick to go with that. So again, what was all this for? I don't know. But if Lonzo leaves, <laughs> if Lonzo does leave, good luck replacing him. Or finding another him in the draft. Starters sucked defensively. The bench was very good defensively. Starters were too slow. The bench had energy. And were athletic. That's why we lost the game. It's your boy Jay Strokes. Peace.